Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Post Perez. Uh, today, we're not doing any reviews of shows or talking about the news. We're, we're doing an interview today, and uh, I'm joined today. My name is VH Park, by the way. I'm one of the regular co-hosts of Post Perez. But uh, I'm doing an interview today with the author of a fantastic resource, a book called J Crown. And the, the, the second volume of this book series has come out recently. And I'm talking with the, the, the author and the, the artist of this book. And his name is Matt Charlton, also known as Shining Wizard Designs on Twitter. And Matt, how are you today? I'm, I'm great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for speaking to me. I appreciate it. And um, yeah. So great. <laughs> uh, just get this out of the way. First of all, it's like uh, you and I have a uh, no and have a common acquaintance, a common friend, <laughs> so to speak. Acquaintance. Yeah. Acquaintance. <laughs> so I first heard of you via your brother, uh, who's, who's, by the way, is named Chris Charlton, who is, of course, yeah. the, uh, the, the, the English commentator for one of the English commentators for New Japan Pro Wrestling. And so like he would talk about you and like your art and you actually had did artwork for a couple of his books. Yeah, yeah, and... well, both of them. Yeah, um, just one thing in in Lion's Pride, and then quite a lot in Eggshells. Yeah, and so one thing I wanted to ask you was kind of like you have this dual interest, dual hobbies of 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 art and of of professional wrestling, and in particular, it seems of Japanese pro wrestling. So, like, which one came first, your your love for art or your love for wrestling? Um. Well, kind of describing anything that I do as art is is incredibly generous and I appreciate it. Um, I think art definitely has to come first because it's it's pretty much always been the only thing that I've been good at, you know, um, not so good at maths, not so good at, at geography or history or, or chemistry, anything, you know, that I've always been able to, to scribble. And so art, definitely. Um, wrestling, um, although it was there from an early age, uh, only really became a big thing in my in my teens so so drawing always so if, in terms of of wrestling what was your first exposure like were you watching like uh, american wrestling or did, did you were you exposed to japanese wrestling earlier or did that come much later well actually I, I mean i'm lucky in a way to be old enough for my first exposure to wrestling to have been british wrestling on on tv um channel three uh, around about tea time, it would have been like it was a five or six in the afternoon when I was a little, little kid. Um, but then it went away. And I suppose my first serious exposure would have been uh, Sting and Vader on the uh, WCW syndicated international shows, because uh, that came along and replaced the, the British wrestling. Um, and then Japanese wrestling came uh, later because you only really get into that, I suppose, or at least you did then when you began to take things really seriously and actually dig and, and find stuff out for your, for yourself rather than just flick on TV and see what's there. So, um, so yeah, it was British first American and then, then Japanese. And what, which promotions or which wrestlers like caught your eye as far as the, you know, pro res goes. Um, I, interestingly, I, I think it would have been, well, new Japan, uh, certainly, but uh, the the wrestlers themselves were um, Sasuke and um, Dragon, um, so independent guys or people who were, although passing through New Japan at that point and holding New Japan titles because you know, they'd appear in um, you know, the, the international magazines, um, guys with more of an independent background. But I mean, New Japan definitely the first promotion i i went into and and was um certainly more interested by and again uh because of uh say new japan's relationship with wcw um more of an exposure to to their stars more familiarity with say chono and muto and um and guys like that before again you know going deeper and, and finding things out for yourself um when you know we actually started to to wrestle and 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 you digged a lot deeper and you found again, more promotions, more people. And I don't know, it was just, just endless. Right. So I, I, I have to ask this, since you're in the UK, were you one of those people that, you know, whenever I talk to people from the UK, they tell me, Oh, like I read a lot about, you know, Japanese wrestling through power slam magazine. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, very much. Um, I loved Power Slam. Um, but uh, so, yeah, it was, I think you'd go to, say, the the news agent, say, W.H. Smith's back in the day, and you'd pick up Power Slam or uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated. And, um, you know, Pro Wrestling Illustrated gives you, or gave you, at least, because um, I haven't seen a copy for years. Uh, again, a, a broader idea of a world of wrestling rather than just this one promotion and this is all there is. Um, so yeah, Power Slam and Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Um, it's a, a big fan of print media, so magazines, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we got we got Power Slam here in Canada and I first discovered this magazine. I was like flipping through. I'm like, wait, they're talking about, it's like non kfa This is not like an after mag. It's not like Pro yeah. Wrestling Illustrated. It's, it's, it's more like The Observer. It's like yeah. we're talking about the business and the backstage dealings. And stuff. I was like, oh my God, they're covering Japan and, and ECW <laughs> and, and all this other stuff. And it's just like, really, for me, just a great, great resource as I was, you know, getting more into Japanese wrestling myself. But that, that's, that's, it's, it's a very common story for everyone from the UK who's a wrestling fan. Like if you're of a certain age, then it was probably Power Slam magazine that introduced you to, to Japanese wrestling through the, the, the amazing articles that they would do with all these great pictures as well. Yeah. Um, so as I said before, like at the beginning, you, you started getting noticed I think for your art by putting up pieces on Twitter and getting retweeted by, by Chris. And then I, I started to notice you get commission work from different outlets. And of course, you know, you had the, you had the piece in Lions pride. You had, you did a lot of artwork for, for eggshells. Uh, did you think you would, you would have a career in art and that it would go like in this direction, being very focused on pro wrestling? Um, I, I think I mean, there was definitely a point where, because uh, I, I left home when I was, was very young. You know, I left home when I was uh, 17. I didn't have a plan and um, I, I didn't finish university. And, and you know, there was certainly different these stages where I, I thought, well, this is literally the only thing that I can do. <laughs> and so we've got to try and make it work. Um, and when I moved uh, here, because I live in the, the north of Spain, um, all I could do initially was uh, sell pictures and... Um, uh, play play concerts you know I can play guitar I can sing a bit and so um, definitely art was was something I always wanted to make a career out of um, I'm not sure whether I envisaged say wrestling and art crossing over to the extent that it that it did um, and that it has but for the last oh, five or six years those two things have, have gone hand in hand and I it's now uh, and I've said it a couple of times recently, but it's now say like, what I'll be doing for the rest of my life, one way or another. Um, and and it's just worked. It, it has worked out perfectly. It's it's a perfect way for me to stay uh, related to to the business, related to the wrestling industry, um, whilst at the same time, yeah, exercising that part of my brain that needs to to create and make things. I think there's a a, a saying in Chinese that if you love what you do for a living, you don't work a single day in your life. So maybe, maybe you have lucked out in that, in that regard there, uh, Matt. Um, I, hopefully um, there'll be a point where I can, I can live off it. I mean, I am not there yet. And so there's I, the day job, which has to pay the rent and feed the family. Um, uh, and so it's, it's kind of juggling things at the moment. Um I mean, no, there's definitely that idea that, that we only live once and we've got to kind of take everything as, as play and enjoyment. And um, it's it's difficult sometimes, <laughs> you know, it, it's hard to do because we're we're kind of trapped in this uh, race to you know, survive or succeed and everything in inverted commas. But um, no, you're absolutely right. If if this can become something that I can. I can really devote time to not necessarily just to um, make money, but in order to do to the people that I'm drawing justice or to, because what it's become has really been a way of um, honoring is not quite the right word, but definitely giving people their due. You know, there's so many people who say suffered through wrestling or, or gone into the wrestling ring and given their lives to this art form, which you know, is, is for me one of the the highest forms of art um but they they just they're dismissed as being just wrestlers or you know they they're forgotten by their peers you know again like there's a a book called um what the wrestling 
uh, by Simon Garfield. And it, it's looking at uh, British wrestling specifically. And there's so many stories in there of like uh, wrestlers who were on TV in the 60s and the 70s that were big stars. And then the 80s come around, the 90s come around. You have them dying of heart attacks by the side of the road. Nobody knows who they are. And um, I don't know, part of, part of this has definitely come to, to just try and make sure people remember and, and take notice of, um, of, of these, these men and women who are doing incredible, ring, uh, incredible things in the ring uh for for us you know so i don't know yeah so let, let's get to j crown and um i have volume two in my hands right now literally it's it's in my hands i don't know if you can hear i'm a i'm a person you know like flipping through the pages right now but it, it's in my hands and uh thank you for sending me a copy of this but oh, man, man. um but this is the the second volume of this series. I would imagine is a series of books. So let, let's talk about the the overall project of J Crown and what prompted you to come up with the the concept of J Crown. And and for those of you who don't know, J Crown is a book about the history of wrestling championships, uh, accompanied by art of the different champions who have held that title. And um and I'll talk a bit about the the format of 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 the book itself in a second. But 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 Matt, where did this idea come from? Um, well, we just wrapped up eggshells um, in, when was it, kind of early 2018. And um, there's a section of eggshells over there um, for, for people who backed the, the Kickstarter, because there's, there's a couple of different editions of, of the book. And um, if you back the Kickstarter, you've got this hardback edition. And in the middle, there's this section of about 20 or 30 pages of people who have... Um, main evented or won the main event of the the Tokyo Dome shows wrestling in the Tokyo Dome. And um, it's just this section where you've got a, a full page um, portrait of whoever it is. And then underneath this little blurb kind of describing the match that they were in and, and what happened. And it's, it's probably my favorite section of the book because, because it's mostly my pictures. Um, uh, so after we wrapped up, the the process and after he kind of bought out the book i was kind of spinning my wheels a little bit as for a direction you know i kind of kept up with uh what was happening and just just kind of drawing people who were doing things this week or that week but i i would need kind of a more a long-term project i'm one of those people who needs to be working on something kind of specific with a goal in mind and so I, I looked at the, that idea of, well, we've done everyone who did this. Well, why can't I just do everyone who has perhaps ever participated uh, in any promotion? And that's, that's too big. And I said, well, uh, maybe every, every winner of every main jet, and then, well, that's too big. And then every champion, and that, well, that was then a workable way of then going forward. And as you, you build up this body of work and said, well, then what am I going to do? with all of these pictures and where is this going to go? And well, why can't I bring out a book of my own, just a collection of these portraits, people who've, who've done this. And uh, initially, I mean, that that's what it was going to be. It was initially going to be as, as much as possible. Um, every champion for as many different promotions as, as possible. And I, I really just wanted uh, a huge encyclopedia of um champions of, of japanese pro wrestling um oh. but then yeah no please continue anyway. no but then just the practicality of it it would be you know dozens upon dozens of promotions and hundreds of champions and it would be far too big a book to to um to bring out certainly on my own um so I started looking for for publishers and kind of uh, crossed paths with john snowden a uh, fortuitous time and he kind of insisted upon a certain reduction <laughs> which worked out practically and um so yeah so that's where the first day crown came out with that focus on the the three main you know old school championships so you got the eight uh, triple crown and the iwgp and the, the ghc and that's that's where that first came book ah, first book came from so like for the for those of you who don't have the first book it it primarily focuses on the the, the three main titles in Japan of like you're saying the IWGP heavyweight title the the uh, all Japan triple crown title and Pro Wrestling Noah's GHC heavyweight title um so 
that's that's an that's a massive undertaking in itself. I would think just doing the IWGP title history <laughs> was a lot of work, and then then you get into the Triple Crown. But GHC is a bit more manageable, I, I would feel. But um, so you you went from that, and then we're going to talk about the second book now, Volume Two. Here is has six titles in it, and for for and I and I gotta say I like the diversity of these titles. So what you feature in Volume Two are three the of the more of the most prominent junior heavyweight titles in in the form of the IWGP junior heavyweight title from New Japan Pro Wrestling, the uh, PWF junior heavyweight title for All Japan Pro Wrestling, and of course, the GHC junior heavyweight title for Pro Wrestling NOAA. And then, but as well, in addition to those titles, you also focus on uh, three titles from Joshi Pro Res. And these are the World Women's Wrestling Alliance, the WWA uh, women's title for, I believe it was for like uh, All Japan Women's, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. and then the uh, Stardom's main title, the World of Stardom, and also uh, a very interesting belt, the Neo High Speed Championship, which is you know started off in, in Neo and then moved over to migrated over to to Stardom and is still there uh, to this day. So, what made you decide for first of all to to like go from like three titles in the first book and then move on to doing like I'm going to do six? <laughs> well, I think that. Uh, this is the thing, like say, uh, Snowden and myself kind of parted ways, and it, it was really the fact that I didn't have anyone kind of um, holding me back or, or telling me not to do so many. Um, I, I really want to look at as many different people as possible and, and try and get as many different uh, people out there um, in terms of their biographies or in terms of their pictures. And so the, the championships here um really kind of gave me a chance to to do that um the the wwwa and the world of stardom i really really wanted to be in the the first book um and so that that's something most of that was was done and ready and and good to go um because there's there's so much of of wrestling today that, that is is completely indebted to, to ajw and and completely indebted to um to to the to to people like Bull Nagano and Aja Kong, um, um, Jaguar Yogoda, I mean, it just, just there's so much that that really needed to to kind of be brought to light, and there is so much that still needs to be brought to light. Um, but yeah, it, it needs to be manageable and it needs to be readable. Um, so so it, it worked out as being not that much bigger than the first book. Um, there's about I think fifty pages more. Uh, but not not that much more. So it's it's more, but but it's manageable and and um, hopefully not overwhelming for people who are, are coming to these these championships fresh. Well, I mean, just from my own you know point of view of having going through the book, um, that I think it's very manageable. And for me, like as someone who's not super familiar with like more old school Joshi, like this is like an incredible resource for me because I'm like, oh my god, I can read about th- these titles, but also like the the champions behind these belts and like their story of like getting the championship. And I really like the format a lot. So a lot of the, you know, like if I, if I look at it now, like if I just randomly look at, like, I'm going to go to, um, let's see, who am I going to go to? We're going to go to like the uh, world of stardom title here. And you have number four or no, not number four. Let's see. Uh, number three is Io Shirai. And you have a nice photo of her doing a moonsault here, uh, a picture uh, that you drew and you, you have like her history here as well and then you have her reigns like you have each reign listed when it started who she beat and then when it ended and who she lost to and she had two different reigns and then combined days as champion which is great and then combined defenses you have like you know the number of that like combined days as champion is 1014 days combined defenses 24 days great i think this is incredibly great information that to have on hand at, at, the, at the ready the and you and you list these for every champion like for the the IW, iwgp junior title and for the pwf junior title and the and the jc junior title and, and the only thing you don't have that for is for the wwwa title which i was kind of i really was curious about what what happened with the information for that um with those titles because that section is just a little bit different rather than taking every champion, which I wanted to do. I wanted to start um, from the moment they, they reinstigated the the title. I mean, you start with Burke at the top and there's a picture of her with the well, basic biography of the title. And I wanted to do all the champions, but there's, um, 
like the resource for for those champions is so spotty at the moment. It's like physical resource in terms of um, reference pictures or in terms of history. Um, there's certainly the early champions in the uh, kind of early 70s before it became um, purely governed by AJW. Um, I, I felt that it, it, it wouldn't be right to give uh, that level of detail or that level of biography for some of the champions and not for others. And so, you know, just choosing 10 people or 10 of those champions that I felt were, were representative or felt were perhaps um, more influential of the, uh, for that belt or, or um, uh, in that period of time, um, I felt then going from a, a random uh, or a general biography to then kind of giving very specific details for some and not for others. I, I didn't feel it, it, it would sit right. I didn't think it, it worked for them. And I think just that section, just talking more about the, the people and talking about what they achieved in their careers. I think um, it's, it's one of my favorite sections of the book. And yeah, you're right. It, it doesn't have that statistic um, element. And I, I love statistics and I love numbers. And I, yeah, I, I like having those things down at the bottom, but I think for them, I think it was just more telling a story of the the championship and telling a belt using those characters to to tell that story rather than a kind of statistical breakdown of their career, uh, if that makes sense. No, I completely, completely. I, I feel maybe you have like a future volume just devoted to maybe, you know, Joshi tiles and maybe in particular, like an expanded version of the WWWA title here. So maybe that's something down the line, if people enjoy this section of the book that in the future volume, you can like, Hey, I'm going to cover pre- everything for that title. And then people are like, Oh my God, I've been waiting for that. You know, <laughs> after reading uh, the, the section in, in, in volume two here, the other thing I want to talk about is terms of format of the book. And this is something I really, really enjoyed going through where you, for each title, you picked two classic matches and, you know, you came up with a drawing for it and, and you came up uh, with, you know, like a, a a history of each of these classic matches. So what I wanted to know, Matt was like, what was the process of going through each title and then thinking, these are the two classic matches that I'm going to write about and, and do a draw a picture for. Uh, that, that was hard um, because there's are uh, so many, so you look at the GHC junior heavyweight title, you look at the IWGP junior heavyweight title, you look at the matches that have been had. Um, uh, with with those belts at stake, I, I, you know, I'm not ignoring the AJPW either. I mean, but also it, it's it's impossible to, uh, or at least really difficult. That's impossible because I, I did. But it's it's difficult to to reduce um, that title history to just uh, a few matches. Um, I think the process were involved asking a lot of people, um, getting kind of. The, an idea of what other people felt going from my own memories. Um, and also, again, just thinking of, of how those matches uh, influenced what came next for the belt, um, uh, where those matches sat, say, in, in context of, of what came after. Um, I'd say, say the IWGP belt, you've got um, Liger and, and Sasuke is the first one. And then, um, uh, Dragon and um, I'm, 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 uh, Hiro, Hiro, I'm looking. I'm looking at the thing right now. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Takahashi uh, as the second one. And um, there's a certain, for me at least, there's a parallel between those those two. And um, Hiro almost definitely picked up the torch from um, Liger in a way that that nobody, or I, I feel nobody has. You know, for for the reign that he had, let's say Devitt didn't. Uh, represent the heart of, of New Japan in the way that Liga represented the heart of New Japan and Hiromu now represents the heart of, of New Japan. And so I don't I don't know. It, it's all about looking at those matches in, in their context of time and then, then also what it meant going forward uh, for the style uh, that was represented by that belt and um, and by that company. I think it's great. I, I just... You know, like you, a lot of the, the the main point of the classic matches is like they're they're action shots of, of some you know some move being done in in 
in, in these classic matches, the one for Dragon Lee and Hiromu Takahashi is like just, you know, <laughs> Dragon Lee doing the foot stomp while, while, um, from the top rope while Hiromu is like draped in between the ropes. So it's like, ah, oh, what? It'd be nice if you like showed the, the aftermath of that, but we can always go back and watch <laughs> that on, uh, New Japan World, of course, and see what actually what happened after that. But, um, so I want to get, uh, your thoughts about like, you know, what are what's what's the future for J Crown? Is there a volume three that you are planning? Yeah, no, I mean, um, ideally, kind of going back to to what I said before. I mean, I, I, I'd like this to be what I do for the rest of my life, and um, certainly, I mean, I'd like to in some way document as many people as possible, starting with the champions, you know, but then moving on to mid carders and preliminary match guys, you know. So there's there's a lot more that I want to do. And at the moment I've thrown myself into a couple of book projects uh, for this year. Um, hopefully to see the light of day at the beginning of next year. Um, not quite volume three in terms of um, say, looking at specific promotions, but um, say volume 2.1 or, or 2.2 for the other. Um, but yeah, no volume three, volume four, volume five. If people like it. And I think, you know, people have been so kind. People have been so generous in, in their response to this. I, I think there's certainly some people who do like it, certainly enough people for me to warrant uh, going through that publishing process, bringing it out and, and making it there available for people. Um, so, oh, yeah. no, okay, sorry, no, go no. ahead. So no, 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 with, no. with that in mind, like, you know, the, if, if, you, if you are interested in getting J Crown Volume 1, Volume 2, please go to different outlets to buy it. Where, where can people find the book, Matt? Both books. Um, the first book, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. It's available, I think, in more places than this book is. Uh, the volume two is um, Amazon. Uh, volume one as well. Amazon both can be uh, got through Amazon, um, uh, both in digital and um, physical format. You know, Amazon's the best place to go. So, but for the for volume one, you can buy the a digital version of it, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, digital uh, the volume one's available on um kindle unlimited i don't know if that's a good thing jo- Snowden said that it was a good thing so it's it's there and it's available on kindle unlimited and um i, I probably put the second one there as well i think that, that that's the thing being responsible for this second book uh, as a as a publisher as well as the person who wrote it and did the pictures um i know this i i know more about where it is but i don't know the best thing for it i'm a terrible person at selling (laughs) well i'll say this i'm taking a look at amazon.com right now and like you can get the physical copy of the book as well as a a kindle form of it as well um so either way like depending on like the listener if what your your choice of uh reading preference is like with with actual a book or uh digitally on like your kindle or a tablet of some sort then you have you have your choices <clears throat> excuse me so with that in mind also like matt where can people find more of your work um i have a terrible addiction to twitter um so i, I i've put something up on twitter daily f- since 2016 so i'm there at shiny wizard ds um instagram as well so shiny wizard designs um go by have a look and yeah and if you're a fan of postwrestling.com if you want a a piece of of matt's work in in in, and see him drawing our our great founders john pollock and wei ting you have to get you know join the patreon and you will get a postcard with their likeness on it designed by by ben charlton here so nice of way to reach out to me to do that. I mean, um, that was this, that was right after, say, my place of work closed down right at the beginning of this uh, kind of COVID crisis, beginning of last year. And um, I just kind of put out a thing saying, okay, this is the situation. We don't know what's happening. And he was one of the first people to reach out and say, hey, could you draw, draw me and John? And no, he's a beautiful man. So no, I appreciate that. It's the best John Pollock has ever looked. Let me just say that right, right away. Uh, and I've known that man for 20 years. So anyways, uh, yeah, for, for those of you who are Patreons and are listening to this, like, and you, and you got a postcard featuring John Way, that, that was designed by, by Matt. If you like the, the art on that postcard, definitely check out J Crown. It's a 
there's more of it and it actually has people who are, you know, actual wrestlers, not just people talking about it. Uh, <laughs> It's beautiful. I, I I know for a fact every time people tweet about getting the postcard, they're they're oh they're usually like really happy with like you know getting something from John Way, but also like just you know like getting this like really nice depiction of both guys. Yeah, it came out really well. Um, it, it did come out real well. It's it's a nice little postcard, and um, yeah, they're they're really great guys. And um, no, they kind of. Going back to to when Chris used to podcast with you guys, you know, I've always um, had a soft spot for post and um, not lovely. Uh, thank you for you know, like I'm sure the you know the first of many uh, collaborations with with us at, at postwrestling.com. And uh, on that note, I want to say Meg, thank you so much for for joining me and 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 to talk with about J Crown and your art. And I, I hope people do check out both volumes of J Crown that are available on you know Amazon.com is the easiest place to go find these things. Um, but yeah, and like hopefully we'll talk again in the future when you have other projects to to promote and. And uh, any final words to say? No, really. Again, just thank you. I mean, thank you is the biggest thing. Just um, um, so many people, I, I say so many people. It's just really difficult period of time uh, for people who've, who've lost their jobs or they find themselves in difficult circumstances. Um, but there are people who are, are spending money on my work and um physically going out and getting the book and, and, and it just, it blows my mind. I'm so grateful. Honestly, anyone who's, who's got a copy out there. Thank you so, so much. I mean, honestly, I'll just kind of keep on working and um, try and make the stuff as valuable in the future as, as possible. Um, so just, just thank you so much. All right. Well, Matt, thank you. And to all the listeners, thank you for listening and, and show some support to, to Matt Charlton, Jay Crown, go buy it. And on that note, I will bid adieu to everyone and say goodbye. <laughs>